Good Sunday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. We have more severe weather possible yet again today across the southern plains, including the threat for hurricane force wind gusts and isolated tornadoes. And then a late season cold blast will bring more widespread frost and freeze concerns, especially across the northern United States going into next week. And then the long range weather pattern does look to become increasingly possible for severe weather as we get deeper into May. We go over those details later on in today's video. But looking here outside this morning, it is cold. So if you are headed out to church or running any errands this morning, definitely be sure to bundle up as we have plunging temperatures across the eastern two-thirds of the country this morning. In fact, looking at those temperatures as you're headed out the door, we are back down into the 20s up here across the Dakotas, getting into Nebraska here, western Iowa, Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, and then back across the Rockies, and then teens for low temperatures up here into Manitoba and Ontario, Canada. And when you factor in just a slight wind out there, these wind chill values are down into the single digits up here into southern and southeastern Canada and not too much better across the northern United States here into the Dakotas, Minnesota, or back across the Rockies. We have wind chills there across the middle and upper teens. So definitely bundle up as you're headed out the door this morning. Um, it is very cold. But if you guys definitely like detailed weather breakdowns on North America, including southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. I give you daily weather forecast videos each and every morning at 9 a.m. on on this channel and it's also very important to press the like button the thumbs up button here on this video it helps to get all this weather information out to as many people as possible so i definitely appreciate it but going through the day today, like I mentioned, we have that severe weather threat down here across the Rio Grande Valley as that cold front continues to plunge its way further down to the south. But behind the cold front, we have high pressure working in, and this is going to create the frost and freeze conditions going into tonight and even into early next week. But looking back here to yesterday, with that cold front, we did have severe weather, pretty numerous uh, severe storms back here across the Mid-Atlantic and to the Carolinas. Carolinas, where we had multiple areas with wind reports. We had 67 wind reports from yesterday. In fact, we had two tornado reports, one of them up here into southern portions of New York State, and then another one up there on the Virginia and Maryland state line. And we actually did also have some large hail reports back into the Texas Hill Country here into central Texas as of yesterday for a total of 94 severe weather reports. But as we go through today, we got another area of severe storms, but it's far south here into the Rio Grande Valley and southern Texas. We have that slight risk in the yellow shade of color for severe storms, including the Brownsville up toward the Corpus Christi area. So definitely be on high alert for that. In fact, we do have the threat for hurricane force wind gusts in the yellow shade of color with the hatched risk. That means wind gusts over 75 miles per hour will be possible down here. And we also have a 2% shading for an isolated tornado or two. So definitely make sure to have multiple ways to receive watches and warnings throughout the day. And you can see already this morning, 10 o'clock here this morning, we are already seeing a cluster of showers and storms moving its way down into the San Antonio region and getting farther south toward the Brownsville, Texas and the Corpus Christi area here, bringing the threat for widespread damaging wind gusts over 75 miles per hour, a couple of tornadoes and some large hail. This will start to build up a little bit more into early on this afternoon as it approaches the coast here of southern Texas. And then as we go into later on this afternoon, those storms will clear off the coast and move over the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico. But with those storms moving through, they will be uh, very heavy rainfall producers with rainfall amounts generally around an inch to two inches down here across parts of the Rio Grande Valley and coastal Texas from Corpus Christi down toward the Brownsville area. See, that's where the heaviest rainfall will be from today into your Monday morning. And then looking up here across the northeast, not talking about any severe weather today, but just some general rain showers, some rumbles of thunder here moving across eastern New York State through Vermont, New Hampshire, getting down into places like Boston, here into Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and parts of Cape Cod through the noon time frame. Definitely lots of steady rain. A good day to stay inside and watch some movies out here. 
And then as we go through the afternoon toward the dinner time frame, 6 o'clock, we're still seeing those heavier rain showers overtaking much of the northeast, including the Boston area, down here into Cape Cod, on up there into Vermont and New Hampshire. And then as we get toward the late evening, toward the midnight time frame, on your Monday morning, some of this rain will start to pivot its way slowly off toward the east, approaching portions there of western Maine and coastal Maine. That's what we'll be seeing going into the Monday morning time frame as you're headed off to work or school across parts of western Maine. But in general, this will be producing some heavy rain, so make no mistake about it, it will be a nice soaking rain up here across eastern New York State, Vermont, New Hampshire, getting down through Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and then on up here into at least central and western Maine. Some of these areas could be seeing upwards of two inches worth of rain. It looks like the heaviest of the rain will be falling there into western Maine, coastal Maine there, and then back into portions of New Hampshire. So definitely be on the lookout for some flooding potentially, or at least ponding of water on the roadways getting through your Monday morning commute. But then back to the west we have freeze warnings and freeze watches here hoisted by the local national weather service offices across the central plains here and the midwest where we are gearing up for another widespread frost and freeze overnight tonight so going through the day today, these are your temperatures into the 40s and 50s all across much of the United States. You can definitely pick out where that cold front is farther down to the south. Ahead of that, temperatures will be in the 70s and 80s, especially down here into Florida. But overnight tonight, we're going to be cooling back down below 32 degrees, and in some cases, well below 32 degrees here, which is the freezing point. We'll have temperatures back into the 20s, and that is going to make for some hard freeze conditions, if not widespread frost concerns across the upper Midwest here, the Great Lakes, and into parts of the Ohio Valley. So definitely want to cover up any plants that you have planted early on this season from damage or even from um, starting to fall apart from this cold weather. And then as we go into your Monday time frame, we do have a little bit of a boost in temperatures across the Missouri Valley here into the Central Plains, but it won't be by much. We're only going to be seeing temperatures back into the 60s there on Monday. Again, Monday night, we could have more widespread frost and freeze concerns up here into eastern Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and getting into Michigan. Maybe some frost developing back here into northern Pennsylvania and New York State as well. But farther south, we're into the 40s. We're not too concerned about frost, but definitely a chilly night going into your Monday night. And then as we get into Tuesday early next week, we will start to get into the 50s here again across those very same areas. But we will start to rebound a little bit, especially down here into New Mexico, Texas, and the Gulf Coast by the time we get towards that Tuesday and Wednesday time frame. And as we get into early on here this week, we will see that subtropical jet remain pretty active down here to the south on Tuesday. And that really continues through Thursday time frame, really through the end of this week. And that means a lot of rainfall potential across the south and also introducing the threat for more severe weather especially down here in the Southern Plains on Tuesday, April 25th. The Storm Prediction Center does have a level 2 of 5 in the yellow shade of color which is that slight risk for severe storms. This does encompass the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, getting over to Tyler, Texas College Station, and then just outside of the Houston metro area on Tuesday. And this does come at the cost of some heavy rain again. So we don't only have severe weather, but some heavy rain. Dew points will be rising back into the 50s and 60s here into Texas and maybe as far north as southern Oklahoma on Tuesday. And the instability values will be growing to moderate here as we get through the Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening time frame. So going through Tuesday morning, timing out the storms, we do have a cluster of showers and storms up here just to the north of the Red River on up toward the Tulsa, Oklahoma City metro area and maybe southeastern Canada by that Tuesday morning commute at 7 a.m. Likely not severe, but definitely producing some heavy rainfall. That will continue to march its way off to the east by the noon and 1 o'clock time frame. We could be starting to see some isolated severe storms, at least on the far southern side of this complex of storms as it taps in to more of the instability. And then that will dive farther to the south. We'll see new development of showers and storms across the northern Texas region into the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex back up here toward Wichita Falls 
And then over there toward the Tyler, Texas region through that Tuesday evening time frame around 7 o'clock. And then as we get through the overnight hours, this is after midnight getting into your Wednesday morning now. And that cluster of showers and storms will be spreading farther to the east and southeast across portions of eastern Texas, Arkansas, and Louisiana, bringing the threat for damaging winds, large hail, and a couple of isolated tornadoes. And with that, we also will be seeing heavy rain. Remember, the dew points will be in the 50s and 60s down here. Here, plenty of moisture to be had with these storms. So we'll be seeing widespread rainfall amounts of one to as much as three inches with this first round of storms early on in the week from Tuesday into Wednesday, especially across eastern Oklahoma, western Arkansas, east Texas, into western portions of Louisiana. And that will spell out the threat for flash flooding. So in addition to the severe weather threat, we will have the flash flooding potential again across eastern Oklahoma, western Arkansas, getting into east Texas, and at least northwestern, if not west. Western Louisiana getting into that Tuesday and Wednesday time frame. Then as we get through the middle of the week, that first round of storms will push across the southeast, bringing some steadier heavy rains here, maybe some thunderstorms in the mix as well. Uh, we're probably not going to be talking about much in the way of severe storms with this across the southeast as the cloud cover will kind of hinder the instability growth across these regions. But we'll watch another round of storms popping off across western Oklahoma and in northwest Texas later on Wednesday. Those storms could have to be watched for some severe weather as they dive across portions of Texas into Louisiana and over the Gulf of Mexico by Thursday. That'll push to the east and then we'll have another round of showers and storms developing across the front range on Friday. This will be our next major storm system as it moves across the middle of the country and toward the Midwest and the Mississippi Valley by next weekend. So overall, from now through early next weekend on Saturday, April 29th, we will be adding up the rain in a big way, especially across the southern plains, the Gulf Coast, and the southeastern states here where rainfall amounts could average around one to as much as three inches and the heaviest of the rains will be into Oklahoma, north and eastern Texas, getting into portions of Arkansas, Louisiana, and then all the way east to the Carolinas and even parts of Virginia getting through that period, so definitely watch out for that. But as we go through the longer range weather pattern here, it does look to remain predominantly colder across the eastern two-thirds of the country along and east of the Rockies getting through the last few days of April and turning into early May here, and we'll have a ridge of high pressure across the eastern Pacific, which will translate downstream for some warmer temperatures building across the western United States, including the Pacific Northwest, getting into the first couple of days here into May. And looking at this here, you can see that ridge will be spiking all the way up into Alaska, western Canada here in the west coast with these red anomalies. And again, what goes up must come down, so that means we'll have a big system here across the middle of the country with another major trough that could be bringing more widespread heavy rain and some severe weather as we get toward that Friday and Saturday time frame across the Mississippi Valley and the Southern Plains as we get towards this upcoming weekend. And then after that system passes, we'll bring another strong cold front through and we'll do it all over again with another cold blast getting through the first week here into May. So definitely seeing these blue anomalies sticking around through the first few days there in May, at least through Saturday, May 6th, with that ridge continuing to remain parked off to the west with the above normal temperatures across the Pacific Northwest and the Intermountain West during that period, and kind of looking a little bit farther out into the long range. So this is late April. Again, that cold front will clear the Gulf of Mexico here, so we're not talking about any widespread severe weather. There could be some isolated severe storms down here across the immediate Gulf Coast into like the Carolinas, Florida, Georgia and then back into Texas here at times getting through the last few days in April and you can see much of the instability will be limited to those southernmost areas near the Gulf of Mexico through late April but as we go into early May so this is around the first week or so of May we'll start to see some return of the moisture with the dew points back into the 50s up here at least into the central plains and the mid Mississippi Valley with the higher dew points favored across portions of Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas during that first full week there into May. And that's exactly where some more of those moderate to extreme instability values will be starting to build through the early portion there of May. But then as we get deeper into May, so this is into your second and even third week into May here toward the middle of the month, we'll see dew points become a little bit more widespread farther north with the 
the 60s and 70 degree dew points here, that will make the atmosphere a little bit more unstable and we'll have more of the instability growing farther north and more widespread during that period. So that will be a period to watch for more severe storms. In fact, my severe weather forecast from May 1st through the 7th, this is the first full week in May, I do think it's possible uh, up as far north here as Nebraska getting into southwestern Iowa southward. So mainly the central southern plains in the Missouri Valley will have to watch out for some possible severe weather events through the first week there in May. But as we get into the second week in May toward the middle of the month, this was from May 8th through the 15th time frame. I think it becomes a little bit more widespread with the possibility of severe weather on up here into the Midwest, the Ohio Valley and the East Coast. And we also see the threat of the severe weather becoming more likely across the mid Mississippi Valley into the Tennessee Valley during this time frame, especially the closer we get there toward May 15th. So that will be something to watch. Again, it is a little bit far out, but the pattern does look conducive to more widespread severe weather events as we get towards the middle of May. Well, if you guys want additional weather forecast updates here along with this channel, definitely hit the description down below. And definitely follow me on Twitter at HWeather420. I'll post on there periodically about the weather forecast, so definitely follow me. And thank you guys so much for watching this video, as always. And be sure to like the video down below, give it a thumbs up. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new. And hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great Sunday, everybody. A great rest of your weekend, and I will see you all in the next video.